Okay, so we've got everything disassembled and we'll need to inspect the master cylinder chassis now. Looking down in the bore, I see a little bit of debris, pretty typical there. We'll need to get in and clean this with brake cleaner and perhaps some Q-tips and we'll prepare the bore in just a few minutes. As we look around, we have two holes or ports, if you will, that I referenced before. The larger diameter port is the feed port and it supplies fluid right at the threaded area of the piston here. This looks like threads and then it engages the seal and pushes it inward. This is the relief port. This is how fluid cycles back into the reservoir when we release the brake lever. This is very important. Uh, this hole is very large and it takes a lot of effort to block it. This one's quite small and blocks easily if the fluid is corroded. So we need to make sure that's clear. You can use a guitar string, an E-string. Uh, you can use a number drill bit. Um, you know, a very tiny pick even perhaps, but it'll be important to ensure that that's clear. There's a trick to know that it's functioning properly that I'll be able to demonstrate to you later on in our next video about bleeding process after we rebuild calipers. Looking into the reservoir area here, it's not bad, fairly clean. However, there is some noticeable discoloration here where the fluid has begun to go bad. Remember, brake fluid should be replaced semi-annual every other year to ensure longevity and safety. And uh, that clearly wasn't the case in this one as it started to turn brown. We'll need to clean that out. Uh, again, perhaps brake fluid by itself, maybe a aid of a Q-tip or towel may get it. In other cases, if the corrosion is heavier or more aggressive, it could uh, take something as significant as a, a wire or brush or a soft bristle brush to get all that corrosion out. But need this to be very clean. Do not want to contaminate our new fluid. Uh, looking on around here, sight glass is in good shape, so it'll be okay. Um, probably want to prepare the surface here just a little bit where the ceiling washer works. We'll just take some sandpaper and dress that a bit as we go back to assembly. So looking pretty good there. Let's go ahead and do some cleanup and prepare the bore. Cleaner is hard on your hands and stuff's going to spray everywhere. I've got some glasses on here. So going in, we're going to shoot down into the bore here real good. Now take a look in there, look how dirty that is, and look at all the debris coming out. And this was a relatively clean master cylinder in the grand scheme of things compared to many I see. So if you had a bike you're restoring, uh, or bought used components that have been sitting around, just imagine how rough they're going to be in that case, okay? So we see the brake fluid here, clean, excuse me, brake cleaner, and it is removing most of that corrosion, so that's a good sign. And we'll supplement that a little bit with a little towel action here. Q-tips can work well. Again, that, that handy to have a small tipped, blunted, not very sharp screwdriver so I can get in here and clean on things without great concern of scratching things. Uh, if I were to scratch the bore in here, that would be a very bad thing. A light scratch I can hone out. A heavy scratch could ruin the cylinder bore and that would be tragic that we'd have to replace the master cylinder we were in the process of rebuilding. So with this pretty cleaned out in here, and again, if yours is older, it can take some effort to get that clean. It might spend a few minutes. I oftentimes spend more time on cleanup with an older master cylinder from an older bike than the actual rebuild process takes. So you need to allow for that. I'll wipe things down here, but overall this is pretty clean. It's nice to have a component that's not too terribly cruddy for a change. Okay, good. Now, one of the most important aspects of a master cylinder rebuild, and something that is most often looked by the do-it-yourselfer, and even some of the professional folks, is to prepare the bore. So we have to have those seals sealing well inside this bore, and just as you would hone a engine cylinder when you're putting new rings in it, we'll need to prepare the bore surface here to break the glaze and to put a little bit of a surface finish in it. Now, a couple ways to go after that. If you don't do this on a regular basis, you can get by with using some sandpaper. So I'd like to get some 320 grit. I'm going to roll it up here a bit. And give me a little bit of a trick to get it rolled tightly enough to go down in there. I'm going to take a couple of tenths. I think this is going to get it. We'll find out. And I'm going to dip this in some brake fluid, get it wet with some fluid.
I'm going to insert it into the bore and then in a twisting manner I'm going into the wrap so that it tightens the sandpaper outwards against the bore and just kind of work it a bit. Now this is less than optimum but far better than nothing. So if you're a do-it-yourselfer and this is the best you can do, this is better than nothing because if you just simply put the new seal kit in an unprepared bore, you may find that it doesn't bleed out well, it doesn't bleed out at all, or it bleeds out but delivers less than optimum level of pressure. Now you can already see what a difference that's made just with the sandpaper. Okay, so a great improvement there. It'll certainly get you by. If you do this on a regular basis or you're professional, then you're more likely to be using a brake home. Okay, this is just like the homes we use to prepare engine cylinders. It's just sized for your master cylinders. They come in a variety of different sizes. Got another drill here again. I'm going to brake fluid on it. And just as when honing an engine cylinder, we want low RPM and a relatively quick inward movement, inward outward movement because we're looking to achieve a 45 to 60 degrees cross hatch just as we would with an engine cylinder. It's often easier to do this in a vise. Don't need to do a whole lot here. And the older and rougher condition the bore is in, the more honing will be required. In this case, not much. Already prepped with some of the sandpaper. Yeah, this unit's in pretty good shape compared to many that I see. Notice I'm spraying back through all the ports here. I want to make sure I relieve all the dirt and gunk. The last thing we want is a whole bunch of debris and junk in there with our brand new seal set. I'm also going to take just a couple of minutes and do some other preparation here that will make your life easier as you go. A couple things I like to do. Lay the paper out flat. Upside down on a nice flat surface. Draw a few times to clean this surface. Now this master cylinder is in fairly nice shape but many of them you will find quite a bit of corrosion here and sometimes even some light pitting into the metal and we want to make sure we've got a nice flat clean surface for our diaphragm seal to work against and by that same token I'm going to do just a little bit of that right here for the banjo bolt as well I don't want to get too aggressive with it. I don't want to change the shape of it or round it off. I just want to ensure it's clean. I have seen these leak even with new ceiling washers because there was just enough corrosion there to be a problem. And one last spray here to make sure we get our debris out. I got a little bit of towel hanging on there. It needs to go away. A little bit of compressed air is handy to blow this off. We have an air can over there. We do. Air compressor is great, but this is a great handy way by the air duster things at the office supply store, or big box store, and so forth. And this is a nice way to quickly blow things out, dry it, remove any loose bits of debris. So let's have a look inside this bore now and see how much nicer that looks. And I think you're going to be impressed. Do you see that we have there? So again, we want that to be prepared very similar to an engine cylinder. Break the glaze and put a little bit of texture to the surface. 45 to 60 degree cross hatch pattern. So, master cylinder is cleaned up and ready for assembly. I will spend a couple of moments here while I'm at it and go ahead and clean off my lower pin. Got lucky on this one, it's in pretty good shape. Some of these will actually require a little bit of sandpaper, maybe a brush or a buffing wheel to remove corrosion. That one wasn't bad. Looks real nice inside the lever, just on principle. Yeah, I'll run the towel through there just in case. Yeah, a little bit of stuff there. I'm surprised, isn't it as clean as that looked and how much junk we got out of that? It's the little things like this that 
overlooked that make the difference in the long run. So we're going to assume that we've already tested our brake light switch as described here and we're going to be satisfied it's good for the sake of this exercise. Okay, so we will be discarding all of these parts because they will come in our new kit, which I'll show to you in a moment. Let's get those out of my way. So your brake crafters master cylinder kit's very complete. Red rubber grease, which we'll show you how that works in a moment. Return spring, dust cap, secondary seal, circlip, clip, and our piston set. Now, this kit's nice in that the primary seal is pre-installed on the piston force. This varies, it just depends on the kit. Unfortunately, this is not always the case, and in some instances, we will have to install the primary seal onto the piston. And this can be a little challenging. Okay, now a couple things. Notice the primary seal is cupped, and the cupped open end needs to face inward, as that is how the fluid is pushed. So I gotta make sure I put it on the piston in the right direction. I won't have to take it off and switch it, that's no fun. A bit of the red rubber grease here, now I don't have to get too aggressive with it. And yeah, that's kind of challenge the gloves, but I need to get some on there. Primary seal on the piston. You want to be gentle going across the uh, groove here that the dust boot fits into. And now comes the hard part. We've got to get it over the flange here into the area where it lives. So you can see where it's going to end up. Sometimes, again, if we're fortunate, we'll be able to do this with our fingers and just shove it over there. And this is the counterproductivity of using the grease, which helps us in one respect and makes it more challenging in the other. All right. Now with the gloves on, this isn't getting it. So let's see if the glove off, I can get lucky enough to push this on here with my fingers or not. And in this case, not. So again, my dull, blunted, small pocket screwdriver, a little bit of grease on it. Very, very gently, because if I damage the seal, then that was the point of the whole process. Get underneath of it and give it kind of a squeeze here so I alleviate the pressure. Okay, and then kind of a gentle peeling motion, I've got to get it over the lip. And getting it over that lip is the whole challenge. Once it gets a pass here, it gets easy after that. I don't want to stretch it too hard. There she goes. Getting the circlip out and getting the primary seal on the piston can be your two biggest challenges here. Now I've got it on here. I want to be real careful with it, but I want to make sure it's not rolled or folded. Looks pretty good. I can see the cup on the inside. It's facing the right direction. There's rotating on the piston. Looking good. Okay. So there we have it. Now, in a similar manner, I will be working with my secondary seal. It's got a little nib right here. And that's going to fit into the hole. I'm going to press it on. I intentionally did not use any grease there because I want it to stay on here. That's going to aid my assembly. Not all of these will have that little nib, but many do. So we're prepared, we're clean, we're dry, we're prepped. Okay, so spring goes first. And notice as well, it's a cup shaped seal. Open end is going inwards. A bit of the red rubber grease is nice on the edge of this to help ease that installation. This is also nice because if you're not in a position to be able to immediately move on to the priming and bleeding process, got some lubrication here so our seal doesn't dry out. Another advantage. Okay, so in we go. If I'm lucky, I can just push it in the rest of the way with my finger. And I was able to in that case. Sometimes a little bit more challenging. Uh, the flat end of my screwdriver here can also be a way to push that in as needed. Okay, so bring the old seal. Okay, so this is our new unit that we received. Already had the seal on it. We got a little bit of red rubber grease on here. Don't need to get crazy with it, but I need to get enough on there to provide it lubrication.
Now, I'm going to kind of lay this in here for the moment and prepare the circlip. Now, the circlip can be almost as challenging to put in as it was to get out. I have spent more time fighting circlips, piston seals, and cleaning than the actual rebuild process takes. So I'll get it positioned in here. I generally try to shoot to have the open end over here near the lever area uh, opening, or it's a little easier to access. Over the piston, I'm ready to go. I'm using my finger, try to hold a ring in one spot, got to push it down, and of course it pops out of the, the circlip plier, so I'll have to start again. The taper on these pliers is causing the clip to jump out. And in we go. Good. Okay, so I got it down in there finally. Now it's always a good idea to verify it's snapped all the way into the groove. It can appear to be a knot. So again, using my little screwdriver here, I'm pushing on. Oh, I hear a little snap there. So it was close, but not quite. It's right on the edge. The last thing we need is for this piston to pop out of here when the system is full of fluid. Remember, brake fluid is corrosive to your painted and plastic parts, and that's not a good thing. So we're in there, now we got to put our dust cap on. It has to fit into the groove right here. So, in there. Sometimes you can get it started with your finger and just go around it, and it'll drop in there. Other times it may be easier to just give it a little help with the pocket screwdriver, and look at that. Went right in, looking good. Finish it up. Make sure it is squared. And then once I've got it pushed into the groove there, I need to push the bottom of it down into the unit to get my weather seal. Be gentle with this. Again, the blunted screwdriver, I don't want to poke a hole in my new boot. That would be very, very frustrating. So, all right. Working the unit. Move smoothly. Snaps back. All good there. So that part is done. Uh, we'll take our lever. Now, in this particular case, I'm using the red rubber grease because that's just what I have here, but you would want to use a uh, molly type grease, something a little bit heavier duty than this. For your long term use, just a little bit there, just a little bit here. Now this can be a little bit challenging because we've got to fight against the return spring of the master cylinder a little bit to get that started. Get the line up on it just right. There we go, got it started, and then we'll thread her on in. Doesn't have to be super tight there, I'll grease when to wipe away. Snug it down. Don't need to kill this, okay? It doesn't have to be stupid tight, folks. And again, making sure it moves. Good there. Now, a little bit of clean up here. Now, of course, we're going to immediately install this on the motorcycle. Would not need to put it back into the master cylinder because we would be installing it immediately. In this case, it's going to be a little bit before we get to the bleeding exercise. So we'll get this cleaned up. I'm just wiping the initial moisture and stuff off here, but I will want to hit it lightly with a little bit of brake cleaner. Make sure I remove any residue, and the brake cleaner will get rid of the water too if there's any residual water there I missed. Make sure it's nice and dry. Now the brake cleaner will evaporate on its own, but I like to get in here into the accordions, into the, the grooves in the boot. If you've got an older unit, you're going to be alarmed with what you see when you do that. There's going to be all kinds of gunk jumping out at you. And that's yet another reason to replace this piece when you're doing a master cylinder rebuild. You're going to want to remove all that moisture.
one of the best things you can do is try to maintain as clean a work area as you can and clean the components as best as possible. Okay, so sometimes there's a little alignment marks. In this case, there's not. Just fit it on, and I see that it's nice there. Okay, and then check and ensure the fit is good, nice and snug. And again, writing letters and marks face the direction of the rider. So I'm just gonna put these screws on finger tight because we're gonna be going back into this to put fluid in it here in the next couple of days as we give you our demonstration on bleeding. So I'll close that up just enough to make sure nothing crawls in there while I'm waiting to reinstall. And make sure we're using our fresh sealing washers on the banjo bolt. Okay, there's kind of a sharp edge, kind of a rounded edge on these. I want the sharp edge facing towards the brake line because the sharp edge is the side that's going to seal the best. And I'm going to put this in place too so I don't lose track of it. So tomorrow when I go to install this and bleed it, I actually know where the bolt is. So. Last thing, brake light switch. Now, a couple things to note. There's a little alignment nub there that lines up with this, okay? And, you know, I've got to be careful of the switch here because I've already put the lever on, okay? So I don't want to break the nub off, so I'm going to push it in until it clicked in, okay? I felt it drop in the notch. It's looking good. Keeping just a little bit of pressure on my finger. In goes the screw. Again, this is another screw that doesn't need to be ridiculously tight. I have seen folks actually break these switches by putting a monster torque on the screw here. Just snug it down, good folks. All right, and there you have it. Decent master cylinder serviced with Brake Crafter top quality components. Everything's looking good, everything moves real smooth. And shine this up a little bit after I put it on and as a matter of fact that's one of the nice things about brake fluid is it will actually help restore this paint a little bit but don't let it get on the rest of the motorcycle's paint. So there you have it, master cylinder rebuilt ready to install. If you've enjoyed this video, appreciate it if you give us a like. You can subscribe to our videos for a full line of brake maintenance and as you climb on your motorcycle just stop and think for a moment what's stopping you. Thanks for choosing Brake Crafters and we'll see you again next time.